Wasps are nasty, evil looking insects. And when one comes near you, you no doubt engage in a weird, embarrassing dance to get away from them. They're territorial and will attack if you get near their nest. On top of that, it seems like they have a way to call for help when they feel threatened. Someone that knows a thing or two about wasps, and we'll talk about this today, is our expert, Jennifer Gordon. She's an urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Jeff. Hey, have you ever been stung by a wasp? I haven't. Uh, yeah, I've had a, a couple experiences stung by a wasp. Um, you know, I was just thinking about when I was younger, you know, I think I was in my teens or 20s, I was collecting insects with a group and our TA was walking and I'm not sure what he walked over, but he really aggravated a nest and, and they came out and I got a couple of stings that time. Angry little uh, evil insects, I guess. I, I don't like how they look. They look scary to me. I've been stung by yellow jackets and honeybees. And those aren't fun, but um, I think the wasp might be a little more, bit more intimidating to me. But you know what? Let's get into this topic about wasps because this is something that'll affect homes and also businesses, facilities, because wasps, I don't think they're picky about where they live. What can you tell us about wasps? Sure. I mean, a bunch. And, you know, where do I start? And in my opinion, I think wasps are pretty cool. Uh, they're in the same group as ants, bees, and sawflies. And the majority of them in this group are beneficial, serving as pollinators, recyclers of dead and decaying material, or even beneficial predators that consume other pest insects. However, individuals and colonies can become an issue, especially when they overlap or interfere with human activity, which is what you're talking about. You know, additionally, many ants, bees, and wasps have specialized body parts that sting and inject venom that they can use to defend themselves and the nests. And even though these stings are rarely life-threatening, they can be very painful and pose a public health threat to humans and animals, especially if someone has an allergy. And today I'm gonna to talk about one specific group for the most part um, called Vespidae. And within this group, there are different species of wasps that sometimes people can encounter, such as yellow jackets, bald-faced hornets, and paper wasps. And these wasps generally have queens, uh, live in nests, and have workers that tend the nest and larvae and provide resources for the entire colony. Well, within this group, there are many different species. However, a majority of them are gonna be of little concern to humans because the wasps rarely, if ever, encounter or sting people. However, the yellow jackets, bald-faced hornet, to a low degree, the paper wasps can be issues for people. Yellow jackets love to eat what we eat. So unfortunately, we encounter them a lot outside when we're doing things like standing near trash cans, eating outside, going to ball games, and similar outdoor activities. And bald-faced hornets and paper wasps can be a challenge when they build their nests on properties, especially when these nests are where people frequently travel, such as paths, doorways, and overhangs. I guess I stand corrected. If I was stung by a yellow jacket, that's a wasp. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, always something new every day. Now, Jennifer, obviously we want wasps and we want any of these pests to stay outside where they belong, but I've seen them on the outside of my home building their nests. Is that how they get in? Do they start there? Tell us about that. Sure. Um, you know, for the most part, they do want to stay outside, which is good. Um, but the individuals can make their way indoors through open windows and open doors. And in these instances, you know, they don't want to be inside any more than we want them inside. But sometimes wasps trying to escape winter will make their way indoors too. Uh, occasionally, however, you can get a colony of those yellow jackets that infest an outdoor facing wall. And if there's damage connecting the outside and the inside, you may see the yellow jackets inside relatively frequently. So how many makes a real problem? Yeah, you know, I think that's a really great question. And especially for wasps, I think that's a personal preference. You know, I've seen some people become extremely agitated and concerned after seeing a single wasp at a distance. And, you know, I personally don't like seeing several yellow jackets around my food. Um, you know, I talked about the instance I was stung, but I've also been stung by yellow jackets outside because I didn't realize that I'd even stepped on one. But depending on the species, location, and time of year, you can come across a nest that can have several hundred or thousand individuals. Yeah, I know when I've had to kill some because they got it, it, like in the eaves of the house, 
I stay way back and I spray that 30 foot spray and it seems to do the trick, but uh, what do they do in the winter? Um, they can't survive in the cold. You mentioned some get inside, but what do the rest do? So in the winter, what's going on is the nest and the majority of the workers have died and you have a single fertilized queen that still is around. And she actually finds shelter and survives winter and hunkers down and waits until spring comes when you have more favorable temperatures. And then she'll emerge and start building a new nest and raising new young. So the wasp we see like right now out and about, they're, they're young, they're brand new. Yeah. Absolutely. For the most part, you oh, might see queen. a foundling queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they a threat to other species that are valuable to us? Sure. You know, I think a lot of wasps are considered beneficial because they will kill other pest insects to feed their young. You know, I do remember one time though at an estate cell, I actually captured a video of some yellow jackets attacking a beehive to harvest their protein and honey. Uh, additionally, some newly introduced wasps might damage local ecosystems, but for the most part, I consider wasps beneficial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, they're on your house. How do you get rid of them? Do you uh, just spray them like I've been doing? Yeah, I mean, that's always a great question. You know, first and foremost, if you find a big nest, I definitely recommend you call a professional. You know, you don't want to deal with hundreds of stinging wasps. Even if you're not allergic, several stings can really hurt you. And if you do call a professional because you have a nest in a building, uh, do not block that hole with caulk, you know, leave it open. This could just make the wasps angry and increase the likelihood that they're going to make their way inside. So just leave the nest alone, keep building occupants away from the open if possible and let professionals take care of the problem. If it's a small nest though, or you feel comfortable around wasps, you know, I would recommend purchasing an insecticide product labeled for hot wasp and hornet removal. Always, always, always read and follow label directions. And when possible, treat in the evening or at night when temperatures are cooler and the majority of the individuals are home in their nest, so to speak. Um, keep a safe distance, like you were talking about when treating, and again, always follow the directions on the label, including those about personal protective equipment or PPE. You may even consider wearing a beekeeping suit if you happen to have it. You know, once you've done that, give the treatment a couple of days and then clean up the nest if possible. If a nest is left behind with a bunch of dead individuals, you can actually have secondary pest infestations. So really cleaning up and removing the leftover nest after treatment is very important. Well, maybe I'll buy a beekeeping suit because I don't have one and I don't know anyone that does, but uh, definitely would protect you. Last question, Jennifer, let's talk about the when you get stung, um, besides a nasty sting and the pain, how dangerous is that? And is there any pu public health concern? Sure. So the wasps we're talking about today are beneficial and not known to spread any diseases that I'm aware of, which is great. However, people can become sensitized to stings and have very severe allergic reactions. And even people who are not considered allergic can still get painful welts and have reactions if they're stung. And then, you know, whenever skin is punctured, there's sometimes a possibility of getting secondary skin infections. You know, I consider wasps friends, not foes, but when they build their nest close to people, they can become a problem. And like always, if you ever have any questions about those or any other insects, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help. All right, Jennifer, thank you for the lesson on wasps. And now I know I've been stung by one, but only one, I think. So thank you.